All right, so in this quest, kids, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get this thing to work. Now, apparently this is an old flow sensor from Jetty, and I couldn't get it to work on here. It would start showing on the telemetry, and it was like, it would start and then stop. So I have everything on here. It's sensing it. I had to call them because this one in the manual says it needed to be X bus. And really it should have been on just regular servo for how it's plugged in to the EXT port into uh, the duplex receiver. So I have an R11 receiver in here. And it was like, I was like, I couldn't get it to work. So he said, well, try plugging it in and just using the pump from, where the hell did it go? I must have put it back over there. Oh, no, here it is. So, to, to fuel and to defuel the turbine, I have just this set up here. <laughs> it's a smoke pump, I guess. And it's on its last dying leg. And I'm waiting for it to burn up, but it's it's hasn't burned up yet. But anyway, so I put it in there, turned it on, and it actually had uh, close to 600 milliliters per minute flowing into just a cup just to see if it was working so it is so now i'm going to try to fire this thing up and see if i can get a flow out of it you know these starwoods they don't flow a whole lot they're supposed to be anywhere from 100 to 140 milliliters per minute we'll see consumption is 140 milliliters average up to 170 at high power levels so this should be, you know, 140-ish, somewhere in there. It should sense it. It says it goes from 20 to 800 milliliters per minute on this old M-Flow TEX flow sensor. But the last time I tried it, it wasn't getting anything through. The turbine was running, but it's just it wasn't showing anything on here. So I'm going to try it up again now that I've... Flow tested it and it flowed through the thing. I'm going to see if it works. In fact, I'm going to prime it because I want to make sure there's fuel going all the way through that and then in and out the, the thing. And okay, we'll... so this is a test. I want to make sure that that thing is full of fuel before I start firing this thing up. So I've disconnected the fuel line to the turbine and I got my little cup here. And I'm probably going to get fuel everywhere. On the control here, I can tell it to pump the pump without having it on. So I'm going to make sure that it is flowing, which it is. But I need to get it. There goes the fuel through the thing. And it's saying 56 milliliters, even though it hasn't come out yet. It's like I'm priming it. So now I'm getting 72 milliliters, 73 out the end. And I'm making sure I got all the air out of it. And maybe that was my problem from before is maybe it had a bubble of air in it or something and it wasn't reading it. If I could hold this thing here, I could show it. But we're gonna run the turbine and do it that way instead. Okay, we're ready to fire the turbine, and we'll see from there. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> okay, and the other test is to see if my bottle is actually holding gas like it should. I think it is, but you never know. It was laying pretty flat. It was laying as flat as this, so I kicked it up to a little bit above 45 degrees. So... There's the thing. We're going to go through this and see if we can't get this thing to fire off. There you go here. And now we'll see if it held gas or not. Oh, it almost held gas. It might fire. It might fire. It might fire. Probably not. Nope. Is not gonna fire. 
it almost had some gas left in it from the thing. And if this says bad pee, yep, it sure does. Bad pee means it's not enough gas. So I fill my gas up. And I can almost do it with one hand, almost. Not quite. There we go. You can see it going into the gas bubbles and all that good stuff. And that should do Press it. again. And put the gas in it. And let's see if we can get this to go. So there's one flip. And that sounded good. Let's see if we get some. Oh, there it goes. Hot damn. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. down to do this and we're gonna get up to we're gonna get up to speed okay up 100% we're gonna see what it does Although I tried to kill myself by rotating the freaking thing back and forth. So, it actually does work. I got it to work. So there must have been an air bubble in the first time I tried doing it. But uh, now we're going through our cool down. And it actually gave me a reading. So now I can set an alarm for uh how many milliliters i've used and all that kind of good stuff so we'll see how it goes at least now i know that this thing will actually work <laughs> telemetry yeah it's the pain of all of our existences when you don't know how to do it right and one of the last problems i've had is this thing starts on the propane butane mix, which a lot of people are like, oh, why don't you go to kerosene? Well, I hate kerosene. Besides, it takes and you got to put a big old honking thing out here and whatnot, and that would get right into my scale freaking, you know, air intake. So I didn't want that. I like propane. But I was having problems, and I've, I've had it for years, and it was positioned like this. And I get one, maybe two starts out of it. Well, reading the manual, I, th I think I talked about it before, it needs to be vertical plus or minus 45. Well, I raised it up to like this, and now the damn thing won't hardly start at all. So, I fired it up. I filled it, made sure it was full. It fired, and, and then I let it, I shut it down, cooled it back off, tried it again, left this loose. It didn't want to fire. It wasn't firing. I grabbed it and left it level like this horizontally and then fired right up. So I'm going to reposition the fuel tank so that it's like this and get it in there because it was worse whenever I had it up. Like it's like the instructions are telling me. 
just put it down like that, I can fire it right up. So I'm gonna position it horizontally and I had to, you know, move all this stuff and put some wood work in there, get this up in here, and uh, then we'll get it tested out again. And with the fuel system, with the telemetry in it now, I needed an accurate reading as to how much fuel this thing actually has in it. So I had to go, I had to go buy me something that was somewhat accurate, and it's got a thousand milliliters in there, one liter. So believe it or not, this thing, when I filled it up completely, like I would normally do, and before it got into the header tank, the vent, whatever the, there's a particular UAT bottle. There is over 3,200 milliliters of fuel in this thing. Three liters. So I had to go in and adjust, well, you can't see it now because it's not on. Uh, my total was uh, 3,000 milliliters and I have the alarm set to go off when it gets down to 650 milliliters. So that should give me, theoretically, by my math, which sucks, um, 15 minutes of flight time before I get into that little bit of reserve of 650 milliliters. That little bit, running at the highest that I saw running today, which was 190 milliliters per minute, which was me kind of going up and kind of goosing it a little bit, not a lot, was 190 milliliters a minute. So that should give me, you know, roughly 200. So 600 should give me three minutes when that timer goes off to get on the ground before it gets into the UAT. So there we go. I am accurately measured and timered and millilitered and all that kind of good stuff. So I think I'm done there. I got out and I built something sort of.